In this part of the FMS CDU preflight, we will cover performance information. Preflight sequence continues on the performance initialization page. The performance initialization or perf init page is used to enter performance related information. Zero fuel weight should be entered on the Perfinet page. The FMC will automatically calculate and display gross weight. This procedure is generally accomplished after all paperwork is on board, fueling is completed, cargo is loaded, and all cargo doors closed. The flight crew shall enter the zero fuel weight and read the FMC gross weight. Both pilots will compare the FMC calculations and weight and balance form calculations to confirm the weights represented are reasonable and to verify no limits are exceeded. In this example, a zero fuel weight of 257.7 was entered and the gross weight of 339.5 was automatically calculated by the FMC. Reserve fuel as used on the FMS CDU is the planned fuel in reserve at destination. It is Atlas policy to add 7,000 kilograms planned fuel at the alternate plus fuel to divert to the alternate from the flight plan and enter this amount in the reserves line. The FMC message insufficient fuel is displayed if the computed fuel at destination is less than the enter reserves. The cost index is the ratio of the operating costs divided by the fuel cost and is normally determined by the dispatcher and flight operations. Atlas policy at this time will be to enter a cost index of 250. The index is used to determine the most economical speed and can be any number from 0 to 9,999. In general, the lower the cost index, the slower the speed. The higher the value, the faster the speed. Cruise altitude is a required entry on the Perfinite page. Step size relates to step climbs in VNAV and is discussed in the VNAV module. Question. Answer B is correct. Pre-flight sequence continues on the thrust limit page. Pushing the lower right line select key displays the thrust limit page. Thrust limit page is used to select desired takeoff and climb thrust limit. Default takeoff and climb thrust is full rated thrust. Select is displayed to the right of takeoff, TO, and arm is displayed to the left of climb. CLB. The selected thrust limit is displayed on the N1 title line. If other thrust limits are desired, line selecting takeoff 1 or takeoff 2 selects the respective thrust limit and arms the respective climb thrust limit. Selected thrust limit can be derated by entering and assume temperature in the select line. D is displayed to the left of the selected takeoff thrust limit and thrust is reduced by the FMC. At this time it is Atlas policy not to use assume temperature D rate for takeoff performance. Check the takeoff and in-flight performance data section of the aircraft logbook to determine that a maximum thrust takeoff was accomplished within the previous 15 days prior to selecting takeoff 2 or takeoff 1 for takeoff.
The pre-flight sequence continues on the takeoff page. The takeoff page displays FMC calculated and crew entered takeoff speeds and thrust. The V speeds for takeoff are automatically calculated and displayed on the takeoff page with flap setting entered and entries complete on the perfinit page. Line selecting a V speed removes the reference and caret display, changes the speed to large font, and the V speed is displayed on the PFD. A takeoff flap setting of 10 or 20 is a required entry during the pre-flight sequence. Acceleration height can be changed by the flight crew. Engine out acceleration height defaults to 800 feet above ground level. However, engine out acceleration height can be changed by the flight crew if the data in the runway performance manual, RPM, dictates. Remember, acceleration height altitudes refer to height above ground level, not sea level. The thrust reduction point is either flaps 5 setting or an altitude and can be changed by the flight crew. The armed climb thrust limit is also displayed. The wind slope line displays takeoff wind and runway slope. Winds are in knots. H is for headwind. T is for tailwind. Slope is in percent gradient. U is for upslope and D is for downslope. These entries can be changed by the flight crew. Atlas Aircraft with the Weight and Balance System, WBS, use values measured by landing gear sensors to calculate airplane gross weight and center of gravity. CG in small font is calculated by the FMC using the weight and balance system inputs. Line selected or pilot entered CG is displayed in large font. Dash prompts are displayed if required WBS inputs are not available. The trim field is blank until CG and gross weight is selected or entered. FMC computed trim is displayed in small font if within the stab trim green band range. Otherwise, the trim field remains blank. Position shift line displays the runway identifier on the left and the distance of the takeoff brake release point from the runway threshold in meters. In this example, position shift is 700 meters. Pushing the throttle toga switch updates the FMC position using the position shift value from the takeoff reference page. Using the toga switch is covered in the auto throttle module. The pre-flight sequence is incomplete. Pre-flight will still be displayed on the takeoff page and a prompt below directs the crew to the unfinished page. When all items in the pre-flight are complete, pre-flight is replaced by dashes and the thrust limit page prompt is displayed. In summary, the FMS CDU preflight begins with the identification page. The lower right line select key is used to select the next page in the preflight sequence. When a SID is entered into the route, the sequence is modified by pushing the departure arrival key. Question.
Answer B is correct. When all items in the pre-flight are complete, pre-flight will be replaced by dashes and the thrust limit prompt is displayed. The pre-flight sequence is completed. Now let's look at adding your arrival procedure at the end of the route. When airborne, pushing the departure arrival key displays an arrivals page. The destination arrival page is displayed if you are more than 400 miles from the origin airport or over halfway to your destination. When the DEPAR page is selected, approaches are illuminated on the right side of the CDU. The arrivals page lists stars and profile descents on the left side. Let's take a moment to discuss the profile descent with regard to the aircraft and VNAV. A profile descent is a calculated descent from cruising altitude to the last constraint in the descent known as the end of descent point, ED. There may be intermediate step down fixes with speed and altitude crossing restrictions that must be complied with. The safest way to execute a profile descent is to use VNAV and monitor the arrival. If the flight crew elects to use vertical speed or flight level change, violations of restrictions are more likely to occur in these modes if the crew becomes distracted. Let's take a look at the proper technique for accomplishing the Civet 4 arrival into Los Angeles. Giant 001 Heavy, cleared to Los Angeles, Civet 4 arrival, descent and maintain 8,000. Expect dial S25 left. In this example, ATC clears you to 8,000 via the Civet 4 arrival. Assuming you have already programmed the arrival, Enter 8000 into the MCP panel and confirm on your PFD. Confirm VNAV path is active. Confirm all intermediate altitude and airspeed restrictions on your legs page. Agree with the Jeppesen arrival page. Monitor descent for proper execution. Runways are listed after the approaches. In this example, the available runways are listed on page 2. Selecting a runway makes available the selection of the runway extension fix, a VFR approach, or an approach intercept to the approach fix or runway. The approach intercept options will be discussed in the LNAV module. Entering a distance on the runway extension line, a waypoint is created on runway heading at the distance entered from the runway threshold. Pushing the VFR approach line select key, the runway extension distance and flight path angle are displayed. Flight path angle may be changed by the flight crew. The VFR approach profile is a combination of a fixed runway extension distance and the selectable flight path angle. This provides path generation for LNAV and or VNAV guidance to the entered runway as an aid to the pilot during a VFR approach. From the flight path angle, a descent path is created from 2,000 feet to 50 feet above the runway threshold. The flight path angle has a default value of 3 degrees, but can be varied between 2.4 degrees and 3.7 degrees by the pilots. To be on the safe side, the flight path angle should be kept within the Atlas Autoland margins of 2.5 and 3.25 degrees. The path then extends level from the intersection point at 2,000 feet above the runway threshold to a point 8 nautical miles from the runway threshold. This point is identified as the final approach fix. Let's now discuss how to enter instrument arrivals. In this example, 
a Potholes 1 arrival to Moses Lake Airport with a transition from EPH. Stars and profile descents can be selected on the left side of the page. Selecting an arrival displays the available transitions on the left side of the page. The right side displays only the approaches and runways that apply to the selected arrival. Transition can be selected, in this example, EPH. Selecting an approach automatically incorporates the approach and runway in the route and displays the available approach transition points and approach intercepts. Delta 145 X ray is the approach transition associated with the ILS approach for runway 32 right. Selecting this transition provides routing from the star to the final approach course. When the arrivals are executed and are part of the route, active is displayed. Pressing the departure arrival key displays the arrival page for the origin airport if you are less than 400 nautical miles or less than halfway from the origin. An index prompt is located on the lower left of all departure and arrival pages. Pressing the index line select key selects the departure arrival index. The index provides access to all departure or arrival pages for the origin and destination airports. Line selecting the appropriate key displays the selected page. Question. Answer A is correct. Selecting an approach automatically incorporates the approach and runway in the route and displays the available approach transition points. Now discuss the approach reference page. While in cruise mode, pushing the init ref key displays the approach reference page. The gross weight line displays the FMS gross weight and is used to compute VREF speeds. This value can be changed by the flight crew but does not change the FMS gross weight. VREF speeds are computed for landing flaps 25 and 30. The flap setting and VREF speed for landing are entered on the flap speed line. The VREF speed entered on the flap speed line is displayed on the PFD. PFD displays are covered in the PFD module. Airport runway line displays the length of the runway selected for the approach in feet and meters.